Hi, I'm Gazan. Hi, I'm Gazan. So I'm going to speak in English, uh, but I, I tried to translate the slides. Um, so this talk is about Git Flux, and I will talk about what that is. But first, I'll talk about what I am. So my name is Sean Moore. I go online as Sartak. I live in Boston, and the flight here was 14 hours, which was kind of terrible, but I'm here, so I'm happy. I work for a company called Infinity Interactive, and we do consulting, mostly web development work. And someone who I won't name called us the Moose Mafia, because the company employs maybe half of the Moose developers, uh, including Stephen Little, who created Moose. And a, a couple years ago, I was actually published in WebDB Press. I wrote uh, an article about Moose and the Meta Object Protocol in Japanese. And at one point, I also created Mouse and then uh, gave it to Fujigoro. So my talk is about Git Flux. And Git Flux is a way to manage the branches in your Git repository. It's sort of like Git Flow or GitHub Flow. Uh, and it's very much inspired by Git Flow, but we had some disagreements with particular uh, pieces of it. So we kind of stole it and made it our own. And Git Flux is uh, very focused on releases. So if you're doing something like GitHub, which doesn't actually, their process doesn't actually include releases, or it does, but they release maybe, I don't know, 100 times a day. Um, Git Flux is different. Git Flux is sort of focused on maybe two week sprints, so that at the end of two weeks you make a release. And typically we're, we're releasing to a web server, so um, managing the release is pretty easy. We just uh, uploaded a, a, a tarball to an app repository or something. Um, and we're actually using Git Flux in all of our projects at Infinity Interactive, and it's working very well for us. Um, by the way, flux is another word to say flow. It's kind of an old word, I guess. Um, so I want to talk first about why we made Git Flux and what we want it to do. So first of all, um, a lot of Git management systems don't really let you remove a feature that you've added to a branch. Um, if you decide, I'm going to add this new feature and then you merge it to master or whatever, it's really difficult to remove that feature later on. You either have to reset master and then do all that work, or you have to manually revert all those changes or use git revert. But we, because we do client work and clients are very, they change their minds a lot, we'll say. Um, we need to be able to remove features from the release that we're building and then make that as easy as possible. So one of the things we try to do in, in Git Flux is that we try to keep tra track of exactly what's on production and the master branch in our Git repository is a mirror of production. So anytime we merge the master, um, we release to production immediately. That's still a manual process. It could be automated, but we only do it once every two weeks, so it hasn't been a problem. Um, and we also want to be able to do hot fixes, which is an emergency release um, to fix some kind of security vulnerability or an urgent request from the client. Um, and a couple of little details, we, we try to develop features and fix bugs in isolation. So we use topic branches to do that. And I'll talk a little bit about this later, but uh, the topic branches are completely independent. And I'll talk about what that means. Uh, we also want to be able to do QA, and in particular, continuous QA. So whenever a developer finishes a feature or add, uh, fixes a bug, we want our QA engineers to be able to, to check that immediately. And finally, we, we like the GitHub model of uh, having a central server. We actually don't use GitHub anymore. Um, but you can imagine that we're using GitHub for all this, because we did for a long time. So in GitFlux, there are a few important branches. There's the master branch. There are topic branches, which have bug fixes and feature additions. There's the base branch. There's the release branch. And there's hotfix branches. And I'll talk about what each, the roles of each of those branches. So the master branch is there to model releases. So what that means is whenever we want to release code, we merge it to master. We update master, and then that immediately uh, produces a release. So that way, we know that any time we're looking at master, we know that that's what's currently on production. Um, 
And another way to say that is uh, master, uh, production kind of tracks master very closely. Um, so immediately after we merge to master, we tag the release, and then we actually ship it. And one thing we, we avoid is committing directly to master. So if we were going to add a feature or fix a bug, we want to make that on a separate branch, and then QA that branch, um, test the merge and all that stuff, and then we finally uh, merge it to master when we're done. So we only update master when we're ready to ship to production. And if we haven't tested a new feature, we're definitely not going to ship that to production right away. So if you want to change production, you have to merge to master. Next is uh, topic branches. And those are uh, little bug fixes or new features. Um, you can also do experimental new features when you're adding when you're working on a new feature, you use a topic branch for that. Um, and each, each feature, each bug fix gets its own topic branch. And typically that'll be like on the level of a, a ticket in your bug tracker. So if you have a ticket in the bug tracker, that's a topic branch. Uh, and topic branches are intentionally short-lived. We don't want to keep them around very long. And that way the merges are easier. If you, if you have a long-running topic branch, that might mean that you'll have more conflicts. And then immediately after or not immediately, but soon after we merge the topic branch to um, another branch, it's deleted because we don't need it anymore. Next is the base branch, and that's the branch where all of the other branches come from, and typically that's just going to be exactly what's in master. Um, there are cases where you do want to, um, you want something that's not in master in all of your branches. So for example, if, uh, if Twitter decides to deprecate their 1.0 API, you want to be able to fix all your branches that deal with the 1.0 API to bump it up to 1.1. And it doesn't necessarily need to be a release. Um, so the base branch is kind of how you distribute changes from uh, one branch to all the other branches. Uh, next is the release branch, and that's kind of the branch that we use to produce all of the changes. We, it's kind of the integration branch. Um, and that branch is actually what's put onto staging. Our, our development QA environment. And that's what's used um, to kind of make sure that all the features work together. And just like master, you never commit directly to uh, release. That would be very bad. <laughs> I learned a new word yesterday. Um, and one of the nice benefits, one of the, the very strong features that we added to this uh, workflow is that we wanted to be able to delete the release branch and then start it over. Um, so we would do that in cases where the, the client says, oh no, you know, we don't actually want that feature until next year, or oh crap, this, this feature has a gigantic bug and we can't fix it right away. Let's just ship it without that new feature. So I'm going to go quickly here, um, kind of showing you how this works in practice uh, with a diagram. So we have time going down the y-axis, and hopefully that's readable. Uh, we have a master, and the, the circles are commits, and the lines are branches, except time. But yeah. Uh, so the first thing we do is we create a base branch off of master after our annual release, and that'll serve as the basis for all the new branches that we create. So then the next thing we do is we create a, a branch for the next release. So we just shipped 1.0.0. Now we're building 1.1.0. So we create a base 1.1.0 and a release 1.1.0. And then um, we can start creating topic branches. So I'm going to fix a bug. Um, so I start working. I continue working. And while I'm working, Rick is working on a new feature. So he's going to be yellow while I'm green. So we're working on these two uh, changes in, at the same time. Um, Rick finishes first. So he merges to release. And now release is being QA'd with Rick's new feature. Meanwhile, I continue working on my, um, my bug fix. Maybe it's complicated. Maybe the magic isn't harmonious. Uh, so we continue, I continue working on my bug fix. And then eventually, I'm done. And I merge it to release. Um, and then QA comes back and says, oh, that actually doesn't fix this, this corner case. So I can continue working on my topic branch. And then when I'm finally done, I merge it again. So it's OK to merge the same branch to another branch multiple times. So we have this new release with Rick's new feature and my bug fix. 
Uh, QA has said this is all good, let's go. So we merge that release to master, we tag it, and then we ship it to production. And that's how we built a new release. So that's kind of the, the ideal way that this all works. Um, and of course those, those branches continue living. We haven't deleted them yet. But once you merge to master, they're on production, they don't need to be branches anymore, so you can just delete them. <laughs> and of course the commits are still there with all their uh, structure and whatnot. So. The only thing that survives is the master branch. And then we continue on to the next release. So this next one is, is using the base branch to distribute changes to all the other branches. So this is the example where Twitter uh, shuts off their API for 1.0, so we, we have an emergency. We need to kind of uh, change it for all, all branches, because a topic branch that is still using the 1.0 API is not going to work. It's just going to fail. So we have time again. We have this release that we built, 1.1.0, and we're going to build 1.2.0. So first thing we do is we create some new branches to manage all this. We create base and we create release. And then we start working. So I continue fixing bugs. Rick continues adding features. Um, and then I decide that um, this change needs to go to all the branches. So maybe this is the change where we fix the API uh, version to use 1.0, or sorry, 1.1. So I merge that directly to base, which we didn't merge to last time. This is just uh, the way you merge, you produce the, this is the way you send the changes to all the other branches. So we merge the base and then we merge the release so that QA can, can make sure that the change I made was okay. And then from there, we can merge that, um, that change to Rick's branch. So he gets that feature too. So he can still use Twitter. So he continues working, and then he decides that, um, sorry, Maki-san comes in and he, he adds a new feature. Um, but since he, his branch descended from after the merge, uh, where we fixed that bug, um, he gets it for free, so we don't need to do anything special there. So his, his Twitter API still works. Um, I finish my, my new feature, and then everything gets merged down, and then QA goes through, and then we end up with 1.2.0. And again, we delete all the branches. OK, next I want to talk about hotfixes. And a hotfix is an emergency release. So uh, maybe the client calls you at, at 3 in the morning and says, oh, oh no, the site's down. What's going on? And maybe it's because it's, you, know, you don't have daily savings, but <laughs> um, it's a new year and you know, our code is broken on 2014. So the client calls up and says, you have to fix this immediately. We'll pay you all of the money. So just get it done. So the first thing you do is you create a branch off of master and then you merge it to master when you're done. So this doesn't use the base, it doesn't use release. Um, and everyone's helping when you're creating a hotfix. So what does that look like? So we have time. We have um, the 1.2.0 release that we built last slide. And we're going to start out normally, right? Because at this point, we don't know that, that um, maybe this is Christmas. So it's not 2014 yet. So the bug hasn't shown up yet. So we're going to start a new release, and everything is going to go smoothly. Um, I start working on a new feature. And then the client calls, and he says, this is a big problem. Let's Let's fix this right now. So then we go into all hands emergency mode. Um, and this red area is the time when everyone is awake and helping out. Um, so the first thing we do is we, 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 we look on production, see what's wrong, figure out what, how to fix it. And we create the, the hotfix branch, and that's in gray here. And then we merge that to master. And then we ship that to the client. So that's the 1.2.1 release. So the way we use version numbers is the first number is like a major feature that's incremented whenever we decide we want to. The next number, the middle number, is just a regular scheduled release. And then the final third number is any hotfixes. So these are unscheduled emergency releases. And then we fix the bug, we merge the master, we shift it to the, the client. So we can continue working again. So Rick comes in and he starts uh, adding a new feature. 
And then we can get rid of the hotfix because at this point it's on master, it's on production, so it's all done. So then, you know, we continue working on the originally scheduled release. I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, so you've seen this before, you know, we have people working on new features, fixing bugs. We merge to, to release, I'm sorry, yeah, we merge to release, um, which gets QA'd, and we continue the regularly scheduled release. There's too many commits in this release. I wish there was a, a fast forward mode for Keynote. And finally, everything is good, so we ship the originally scheduled release as 1.3.0. And then we're done with this release, so we can get rid of all the branches. And everything's good. So the, the, the initial motivation for Git Flux was we wanted to be able to rebuild release. If there was a feature that didn't work out, or if there's a major bug we can't fix right away, we want to be able to scrap what we've done without getting rid of all the... We want to scrap the integration branch, but we don't want to have to re-implement all the features or... Um, have to pick apart all the little changes in the integration branch. So we have this idea of rebuilding release. And this looks like this. So we start a regularly scheduled release, as always. Um, we continue from previous release, which is 1.3.0. And the first thing we do after every release is we create new branches to, to hold all of the integration. Um, I start adding a bug. <laughs> Rick starts adding a feature. Um, Rick's feature gets merged to release. So, so far everything's fine, right? Um, I continue working. And this is all happening simultaneously, and Rick and I aren't stepping on each other's toes because we're working in branches. And then QA comes back and says, um, actually we cannot add this feature. If we add this, it'll affect our bottom line and our competitors will crush us and everything will be terrible. So what we need to do is rebuild the red branch, release branch, with only the green branch. We can't have that yellow branch. So how would you do this normally, right? You would, you would use git revert on that yellow commit, but maybe the, the red commits include a, a conflict merge or something like that. So it's non-trivial to just pull out that commit. So the way we do this is we get rid of the release branch, but we still have those topic branches. So my bug fix is still fine, Rick's feature is still fine, and then we just create a new release branch. And then we can merge my change into it and ignore Rick's change. It'll just stay there forever. Um, and then after that, Maki-san can come in, add a new feature. So at the very end of this, we end up with a release that started with the yellow commit but doesn't have it anymore. So we were able to remove that with no problem. And it turns out that, in practice, um, we almost never have to rebuild the release, but when we do, it's really easy. And I think not many workflows make that easy. And that is why we uh, develop branches in isolation. So one of the questions people have about this workflow is, well, what if Rick finished his feature and then I start a bug fix? Won't I, wouldn't it be better if I had his feature? Well, what if it turns out that his feature doesn't work? or it's, it's not ready yet. So now your bug fix depends on this feature, and that's not good in terms of removing that feature later. Um, and actually, that's all I have. So, go say Joe goes, I got those on us. So you don't need any help? Uh, maybe. We'll see. Hey.
入ってしまったときに、えー、数をリリースに回収してしまったときにリリース、リリースランチを、えー、もう一度作り直す。まあ、先ほど、リトリバあのリトリバードハイドエムで、あのがえー、マージョンリバースというものがあったんでしょうか。あてがにどこからをえっとさっき、えー<笑>えー、<笑> so the question was、um, so you, when you were doing the re revolving releases、yep. um, you uh, oh, did, did, did you revert you didn't really use revert right yeah right so、uh, the question is can you use git revert m to to revert merge instead um you could but I would worry that um it wouldn't be as easy or as thorough Um, in terms of removing all the changes. So, if you had a. I haven't used Git Merge M much.、Um, I don't know how it handles conflicts.、Uh, but this the system we built、um, makes it very easy, and there's almost no thinking involved in re rebuilding release. えー、と難しくなるんじゃないかというのが、えー、と彼の考えで、えーと<笑>なんだえー、コンフリクトがその辺の処理がちょっと怪しい気がするとあんまりそのあのなんだ、えー、細かいところまでその Git リバート配分も使ってないのでひょっとしたら大丈夫かもしれないけど彼,彼の今の経験上はそこでこけ、えー、る可能性が高いはずという感じでしたはい、えーはい、ここにありますかあこちらへ Okay. ありがとうございました。とこのワークローだとどういうところで知り合いとか合わせてるかなっていうことになったんですけど。はい。Um, so the question was how does this workflow、uh, includes continuous integration and that kind of thing? So、um, every time we, we push commits to the release branch,、uh, we use Bamboo, which is an Atlassian. Uh, CI server,、um, it just smokes our build for us.、Um, we could do it on the topic branch level, but we haven't needed to.、Um, but it works very well with, with、uh, CI. Yeah. <笑>なっなっじゃあすいません、ここで。すみません。はい、ありがとうございます。